Ladies and gargoyles, how lovely to see you. Yes, and so here we have tonight is uh, the ill begotten son of certainly one of the finest instrument manufacturers in the world and some other people somewhere. So let's have a listen, see how it goes. So we'll do the pickups certainly on noisy first because there are a couple of little things that I want to point out. If you know, certainly if you're considering uh, purchasing one of these, but I, you know, really pretty decent instruments. So let's uh, see what we're doing. So we are on the uh, bridge uh, pickup first. <laughs> Into the center. Yes, into the center. <laughs> mm. Okie dokie, and on to the neck. <laughs> So, they're good, and they've got certainly a reasonable uh, amount of power, and, uh, I do, and I do like them. That neck one, it's a bit woolly, a bit woolly down there. There's, it's not crisp and there's very little definition, but it's absolutely fine up here. And you do get that ooh. Right, okay, let's listen to them on clean. Okay, so we'll now listen to them on clean, starting at the bridge end. And... Yeah, 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 very nice. Into the centre. Uh, 
that is, yeah, I'm happy with that. And onto the neck. Hmm. Yes, uh, certainly that neck pickup makes a lot more sense uh, when it's not overdriven. Okay, let's have a look around it and see what we've got. So, yes, the Gibson Epoch. Now, question number one, is it a proper Gibson? Well, it says so on the back. You can see that. Yeah, that's probably better. Yes, say it's on the back on the bolt on neck, uh, which is something that Gibson are not particularly famous for. Uh, there's only a couple that spring immediately to mind. The Sonex, I like the Sonexes, and the Marauder. There's probably, you know, a few others knocking about here and there. But, uh, but what were they, what were Gibson thinking? Uh, one of the finest guitar manufacturers in the world. And for that matter, what were Baldwin thinking? Because... They are largely famous for making pianos, and piano manufacturers do tend to be rather, you know, finicky about what they churn out. So, uh, the collaboration and production of these is, for me, slightly puzzling, but hey-ho, here we are. Uh, we definitely know what year it is, because they're made for one year only, which is not, quite frankly, not really a big surprise. Um, Yes, so 2007, certainly we can accurately date it, which is lucky because there's no stamp, no serial number, nothing else that gives the game away. So let's have a look at the headstock. Now, you do have a bit of an open book headstock there. Uh, three on either side tuners, of course. We had a look at that nut, which is proud there, but it's been... Uh, filed down so that the string height is, and the string height is bang on. I've got to tell you, to be absolutely fair to the guitar, I've enjoyed playing it and I've enjoyed listening to it. It sounds great and it plays really, really nicely. Um, so, uh, construction. Well, you've got some <sighs> cheap old uh, tuners there, uh, sealed tuners. Uh, you could certainly improve it uh, in that area and you've got a really really actually a really nice fast slim neck and now that we've done all the fret work we've got the uh, string height or the action if you prefer we've got it down to that sweet spot of 1.25 at the 12th fret and it is really really nice to play very very easy um the neck I don't know what the neck's made of. Probably maple. I don't know. Um, of course, it's got a truss rod, uh, which is what you want, uh, clearly. Uh, but the neck straightness was absolutely perfect. So hats off to whoever made it. Certainly somewhere in China uh, for that. Um, so we've done the frets. I've got uh, a set of 9 to 42 gauge strings on it. And... As said, it plays beautifully. Uh, you have got, you've got, you see, 2007 was uh, a good few years, six years in fact, before the CITES restrictions came into force with the import and export of exotic hardwoods. So, uh, because this is a 2007 instrument, it does have a proper rosewood fretboard. I assume that the dot inlays are acrylic. Uh, we have two humbuckers. I do not like the cream uh, pickup surrounds. I would probably change those for black. And uh, you've got a lightning bolt uh, bridge here. And, the, and, and again, amazingly, the intonation is bang on. It's absolutely sound. Uh, so what else have we got? Yes, well, we do know, of course, that the body is plywood because we saw it on Wednesday's cheeky middle weekend and uh, it, and it's heavy it's a heavy guitar largely because uh, with pliable of course you've got to steam glue uh, the bits together and it weighs in at 3.8 kilograms which is but you know it's a heavy beast but it is very very well balanced so these were as I recall 
Um, you can get them from you know, Woolies and Walmart and, uh, and uh, more specifically uh, Amazon uh, for about 85 quid. Uh, were they worth the money? Well, if you can buy a Gibson for 85 quid, that can't be a bad thing, can it? And mm, I suppose that strictly speaking, you would not be breaking any rules by uh, sticking a Gibson overlay on the headstock there and actually calling it a Gibson because, as I say, strictly speaking, it is. Uh, what else do we have? Yes, uh, so uh, pliable body, one tone, one volume is all you need. Uh, toggle switch, not in the best place. Obviously, the best place is there. Uh, but, you know, it's okay. And you and it's like anything, you get used to it after a bit. What I do like, uh, apart from the way that it plays, is I like the cream binding around the top here. And it's very flat, isn't it? Very flat. Reminds me, reminds me of a bit of a Gordon Smith, to be honest with you. In, to, you know, in terms of body profile. And, um, thing is this. They are attractive. They are a Gibson, of sorts and you might feel like buying one, but if, and you can buy them these days for around the 100 quid mark off eBay, but budget in an extra 50 quid for taking it down to your local guitar tech or luthier. Uh, because the, all, I'm, if this is a good representation of these instruments, then the chances are pretty good that you're going to want the fret sorting out to make because when it came the string height was yay high and uh, it was to all intents and purposes unplayable. Of course we have that other problem where the uh, jack socket uh, wires were upside down so it, so you had a constant hum, I mean it worked which it always would do but it had a permanent hum so we sorted that out and when I put the damn thing back together the blinking tone pot fell apart. My shaft came straight out and so, I mean luckily of course I had one knocking about so I could just replace it quite easily and again that isn't a deal breaker and it's not something that would probably normally happen. I don't suppose that was just bad luck really. Uh, but at the end of the day they're a couple of quid, you know, and it's a five minute soldering job on two points so not really a big issue, but of course, um, this is uh, the the pots are cast from uh, what is affectionately known as Chinese pot metal. Pot metal. Uh, you may have also heard the expression monkey metal, and basically, what that is, um, well, it's anything that only has a very low. Uh, melting point. So, you know, like your own Coke cans, stuff like that. So no iron, because iron has a high melting point and it's more difficult to cast. Certainly uh, more difficult to cast quickly and more expensive to produce. So, uh, but, but, but most of your Chinese stuff will have uh, that um, Chinese pot metal or monkey metal, as stated. All in all, now, I like it. It's nice to play. It sounds great. Uh, the neck pickup, as I said before, is a little bit muddy, you know, uh, uh, down here, but sounds beautiful up here. Very, very sweet and pleasant sound. And so, like I say, all in all, uh, buy one by all means. Uh, you will only pay about 100 quid for one, but certainly factor in an extra 50 quid for you to take it down to your local guitar tech and to get the frets sorted out and get it to a playable standard. Uh, it's about it's about a 7 out of 10, really, for me, because I do like the way that it plays and sounds. So uh, with all of that said, I shall bid you a fond farewell and I'll see you on Wednesday. I don't even know what we're doing on Wednesday. I might do 
measurements and stuff like that. I keep threatening to do that and never seem to get round to it. So uh, have a lovely rest of the weekend and uh, it's uh, adios amigos. Ta-ra.